Hello everyone, this is Vivian with The Hive, and today I have a special guest. I have Dr. Keith Grimes with me. He's a general practitioner in the UK. Uh, he is a self-proclaimed geek and a gamer, and yep. he is the founder of VR Doctors, currently exploring ways to use augmented and virtual reality in the field of healthcare. So welcome. Thank you very much. It's really great to be here. Uh, it's amazing to actually be in a, a social VR like Facebook spaces with uh, someone else for a change. I feel as though I've been doing all my work on my own so far. So it's <laughs> right. great to meet you and speak. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm really, really excited about this because it's 2018. It's a new year. And as with New Year's, people like to do a new them. Um, they have resolutions. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think a big resolution that people have is to take better care of their health. So um, I'm excited here to, to learn about what you're doing in the field of, you know, with healthcare and VR married in one. So let's start out with how did you get into it? Were you, were you in VR first or, you know, or did you want to go in right. with, you know, with intentions to do something for your work? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, look, so as you heard at the start, uh, I'm a, I call myself a geek and a gamer and a general practitioner in that order, because for as long as I can remember, I've loved geek culture and gaming. I've been gaming since I've been about 10. I'm in my mid forties now. So I've been doing this a long time, but a lot along the way, I became a doctor too, because I quite like medicine as well. And so I've spent my entire career trying to bring my love of technology and gaming into the work that I do in healthcare. And, uh, and so I've done that in a number of different ways with other technologies, uh, you know, like a uh, social media type work, with wearables and programming and the like. But, but my, my real passion, my real heart was in, was in virtual and augmented reality. And uh, even back in the early 90s, when I was at medical school, we had the first round of virtual reality then. And the ideas were, were mind blowing, but the technology was kind of not so good. Um, so, so, you know, it went a bit quiet. But when it started to wake up again, I thought, well, let's see how virtual reality could be used in patient care. And so as a, as a general practitioner, I have a patient list and they come to me with a number of different problems. And I started to read and see how VR could be used there. And, 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 it, and it just went from there. Well, yeah. And I think, uh, how many doctors are there practicing, in, I guess, in VR? Because, you know, through my research, I see that the medical industry is quite res responding quite positively to VR in a number yeah, yeah. of ways for pain management, for one, um, mm -hmm. even just for, you know, PTSD. And I, I know that research is still out on it, but you are a doctor inside mm -hmm. VR. Uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. so uh, in which ways are, are, is that different or how do you want to use that? Yeah, so you're absolutely right. There's a lot of good evidence and it's important that you practice medicine with an evidence base to show that it does actually work. <laughs> uh, so in things like, because, because right, you know, it's right. easy when you get an exciting technology, you can go, well, this is amazing. I can, I can use it to cure you, but, but you really want to know that it's doing that. And so there's been studies going on for years about how it can help with pain and anxiety management and, and mindfulness and a whole bunch of different things. Um, but the thing that gets me excited is, is, is what it's like to, to interact within the, the, the virtual world or the augmented world. Now, as a, as a general practitioner uh, or as a family practitioner or a primary care physician, the, the, the real work that we do is, is, is this, it, it's talking. I mean, it's examining patients and ordering tests and stuff, but ultimately it's about the stories that we hear from patients and to come to a common understanding. And, and you can do this in reality, but you can also do it in virtual reality. So, so the thing that's exciting to me is, well, how could it be better in virtual reality? You know, what is it about being in, in a social VR space that might make things easier for patients or easier for doctors or more comfortable or better? And that, so I'm, I'm uh, exploring that. I do a, uh, a vlog or a, a video podcast called The VR Doctor. Uh, and I sort of explore that and, uh, and, and try and work out how it might improve healthcare. Right. And, you know, getting back to, you know, other doctors, are you, how are your colleagues responding to this? Uh, do they think it's too much, too much for them, or is it as, as positive yeah. as the industry in a whole? <laughs> I think um, I mean, the, the, the thing about it, the thing about uh, virtual reality is that first of all, a lot of people associate virtual reality with gaming and uh, yep. uh, and the like, and of course, it's great for that. But but saying that virtual reality is only for gaming is a bit like saying that you know books are only for reading the classics. You know, books can books cover everything mm -hmm. and virtual reality has an equal kind of spread as well. It's just so happens that it's, it's, you know, it's got a bit of a history in that area too. So you have to get over that hurdle, mm -hmm. but there are, 
a number of doctors, kind of forward-thinking doctors, uh, doctors of my age who've been around in gaming, funnily enough, but, but also those people who like the, the use of technology um, are beginning to see how virtual reality can actually meaningfully make a difference to people. So, so I formed a, a group on Facebook uh, called VR Doctors, uh, which people, are, I called it VR Doctors because I was so excited and I just thought about myself and VR, but, but it's looking at VR and augmented reality. It's, uh, it's not just doctors, it's developers, academics, patients, where we all meet and we discuss, we, we share knowledge about virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, and in that way, we, we all learn from each other uh, and start projects going. So we're growing the group of doctors, but we're also growing, the, you know, learning from patients and learning from, from developers and academics too. So the numbers are, the numbers are growing. Um, both people that want to use VR in the physical world, you know, for, for, for treating patients like reducing pain. I use it in my own practice sure. for patients that have to have dressing changes. But the question about what it's like to practice medicine in here is, uh, is a whole new world. <laughs> Uh, it's re that's what's, that's what's yeah, exciting. Right, that's right. really what's, what's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I work n mm. not in the healthcare field, but, you know, it, we work with uh, people who do get, you know, medical care and there, there's history about, um, you know, their medical history. And so we have something called HIPAA here. And I think you have something similar oh, yeah. to UK, which is about medical privacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, is yeah. that something that is also being explored um, as in terms of if I come in here? And, you know, you're talking with me about my health history, but you could be recording yeah. it or, you know, someone else could. Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. So at the moment, so, so at the moment we're in a uh, Facebook space, which is provided as a beta from Facebook. And it, it's a wonderful place. And it's a, I find it really engaging because of the quality of the avatars. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's a good way of engaging with folk. Um, but the thing is, if I wanted to practice medicine inside here right now, there'd be a problem because uh, for a start, uh, who owns the data? You know, it's yes. Facebook that basically own the data and the avatars and, you know, and the nicest Facebook are um, by, you know, pra for practicing medicine, that's not going to cut it. And I'm sure it wouldn't quite cut it for HIPAA either. Um, for a start, I'm practicing in the United Kingdom and the servers are in the States. You know, that's already a, a slight problem for oh, the legislation over yeah. here. So there's, so there's some, there's some basic things in there as well, but all of this can be, you can overcome it with a little bit of care and attention. So within the UK and the National Health Service, um, I've been trained by uh, the digital side called NHS Digital as what's called a clinical safety officer. So I look at how uh, you can r risk assess technology, which sounds very, very dry and boring. But the important thing is that the technologies that we use as doctors and patients can, can really impact on a person's real health. So we have to be quite careful. And if that's true for computer systems, and if it's true for apps and wearables, it, it's going to be true for virtual reality and augmented reality, isn't right. it? So we've got to work on a place. So when you speak to me, if you were my patient, you'd feel comfortable that this was a, a you know, appropriately private and secure right. uh, for you to do so. So there are some little basic things to work through. I have no doubt that we'll, we'll manage this. Good. But yeah, I step. mean, I, you know, just for me in the U.S., we have HIPAA laws, which prevent workers from sharing any type of information about, you know, a customer, a resident, mm. a patient, which is, is, is the, of course, the right thing to do. But one of the things that I'm seeing mm. as a trend is just the fear of social media in general. So I'm, I'm, I'm just shouting yeah. out there. I, I'm really hoping that we can overcome it because... Um, not only is it, I think, good for, you know, diagnosing as a doctor, but, you know, just overall, like, mm. talking to a therapist, you know, that kind of thing that, that I think people mm. could really benefit from in VR. So I'm glad you're heading the charge uh, <laughs> on that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and an another really important thing to bear in mind is that, of course, you want to be careful about how you share the information. And so you put barriers up to stop sharing information. But remember that not sharing information can cause harm too. If you know something that would help another clinician or another health worker with a patient, if something steps in the way of that, that can cause harm. So you have to balance these things up. You can't just open everything right. up. But we do have to allow the, the data to flow appropriately. And actually the most important thing I think is it's all about what the patient wants or the person wants, you know, do they want you, their information to be shared to you or to their doctor or nurse? You know, they're the people that really right. matter. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Uh, and, and, and you know, you're in Facebook spaces. I've seen your videos and, you know, I, you have a, quite the presence. Um, but, but, you know, you. you said that you love technology and, and VR and, and you're a gamer. But yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as your professional work goes, why, why VR and not, say, 
a YouTube channel that, you know, most people are familiar with or, oh, right, yeah. you know. I don't know. That's a re that's a really interesting point. I mean, uh, you know, I, I do I do blogging and I've got a podcast. I do a little podcast called Curistica. I think what I like about uh, reaching out to people and sharing in this way is I think you're right. With, within Facebook Spaces, there's something that's very. I mean, I like the spoken word mm -hmm. side of things, and uh, Facebook Spaces layers on top of that. You know, quite appealing avatars. You know, we quite look like cartoon characters. We can smile, or we can we can look scared. You know, <laughs> all that's really good because facial yeah, 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 all that. Um, so so it becomes um, kind of theatrical. You know, it becomes a bit of a performance. And I suppose people have their own preferences as to how they want to appear or how they want to do this. Some people, uh, you know, are, are fantastically uh, persuasive in written mm -hmm. form. You know, and I, I quite like my writing, but I find that <laughs> right. hard work. But, but this, it, it feels comfortable. So that's why I've gone to this. You know, it's it's a nice way to do it. And it engages people across. Yeah, the, I like the way I look at it, too. Wait, <laughs> wait, my hair. OK, flip a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wish hair, mine was as, <laughs> as flowy in real life. Um, <coughs> but I mean, yeah. for me, you know, I do a show in VR and my friends and family, they they know about it and they, they see it. But even Facebook spaces. Um, as prevalent as it is, as many people who use Facebook, people are still confused with, you know, yeah. seeing me as an animation. So yeah. how, how has your response been, you know, just your, from your personal family and friends and you know, your colleagues who aren't really familiar with the technology? How, yeah. Do they take you seriously? Do they think you're, you know, playing a game or? I think they, um, I think they, I think they, um, well, they know that I'm, you know, whilst I, I try and keep it kind of friendly and, uh, and open. You know, I'm a serious sure. doctor. I practice real medicine, and I, I have some serious concerns about how to do this. And um, I think one that there's two things to say. First of all, a, a, a format like this means that you know a person can look on the outside, and I look like a kind of Pixar character, mm -hmm. and kind of so do you. You know, so so people are, are excited, particularly kids are excited to hear my voice. You know, oh, if they know me point. coming out yeah. with a different face. There's that. Yeah. So so uh, so from a medical point of view. There are groups of patients. So, so in in reality, this is me, but I'm six foot six. Wow. I'm big, and you know, I'm loud. Um, and so, yeah. So, so, but if you're a kid, if you're a small child, mm -hmm. and you get faced with this, you know, looming over you, um, it's scary. But in VR, you know, we're the same height. We're, you know, we're, it's a bit more comfortable. So, so I think that it's going to really help people. The other thing is that um, people watching right now are maybe seeing on a flat screen. But for you and mm -hmm. I, we're in VR, so it's difficult to convey. But I, I do literally right, feel yeah, that you're you sitting across the table oh, from me. And yeah, it's, yeah, that's it's right. Good. And we can uh, hang on, oh. and we can knuckle bonk. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and high finally, five. high five. Yay! Oh, look at that! Isn't that cute? The little there you go. So we can. <laughs> Yeah, no, have you not seen this? They keep they keep adding right. new things. That yeah, we it does feel like you're shaking hands with a person. So yeah. Yeah. So this. So here's the thing: is that um, for a production of a show like this, it's, it gives you quite nice production values. It can be very appealing and stuff. But the real magic of this is when we yes, get more people absolutely. inside VR, um, and then we maybe have an mm -hmm. an audience here as well. Or people can. It, it it could be you and me speaking, and then thousands of people right. to the third person. So it feels like an intimate fireside chat. Right. But, you know, there's lots of people. So so there's lots of interesting things. Yeah, that well, have right now that. it's just you and me. We're just recording this interview. But the people who are watching this right now live in alt space. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, they are, you know, people from around the world. They're watching it live from their living room, mm -hmm. you know, or, or their bedroom. And they're tuning in. And the majority of the people... Um, are, are gamers, you know, like you said yourself, VR users are gamers. Our, I can't mm. say they, me as well. We all spend hours upon hours um, in our headsets and, you know, hanging out with each other, yeah. talking or playing games. I'm not, not very being, you know, active, which is fine because I'm in Chicago and it's freezing outside. But yeah, <laughs> yeah do you have, so a, um, you know, any like physical health advice in general? Yeah, for, for the yeah, gamer. Sure. Okay, well, the advice that I would give people about using virtual reality would start with the same advice I would give anyone doing any kind of 
predominantly sedentary activity. I, I will come on to how VR can be very active in a moment, but um, if you're going to be spending any time interacting with a computer technology like this, you want to make sure that you're taking frequent breaks. Now, what's nice about virtual reality is you can actually get mm -hmm. up and move around. And so it's not quite like sitting on a beanbag in front of a TV and just with a pack of chips on one side and a big drink on the other. You know, people get up and move around a little bit more, but you're still going to want to take some breaks, if only because the fact that being inside virtual reality is a, is a really deeply immersive yeah. Uh, thing and what we do know or beginning to see is that people who spend a lot of time in virtual reality can feel a little bit dissociated when they come out it can feel a little bit odd uh, so you want to make sure you're taking regular breaks and maybe taking your gaze so you're mm -hmm. looking away in more of a distance and certainly if you're sitting down to use VR you're going to be wanting to get up and move around a little bit but um but we were talking a bit earlier on actually virtual reality is it can be anything but relaxing right, yes. and really intense uh, a hard work, you know. So, what games have you? Because you've played games and, and activities where you've oh, worked on uh, sweat. Well, I you? don't sweat. I'm a lady. Oh. <laughs> All right, okay. You just glow. Sorry. That's <laughs> glow. I sweat when I play super hot. I get very, very hot. And sweaty <laughs> well, so I hard do. Um, I do like you know active games like Audio Shield is a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I really, yeah. really like this game. I think it's called um, Smash Up. And you just have like this baseball bat and you're just beating plates mm -hmm. and there's people cheering you on. I like that as a stress relief, but you do work up a, um, what you call a sweat. Ah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good, good, yeah. good activity, of course. Um, well, actually, so is it worth me showing? I'll take this uh, picture of me out of the way for the moment. I'll replace it with something. So um, when it comes to the activity levels, um, uh, there, was a, there was a guy that I met who um, who previously worked with Apple, and, and he was playing Audio Shield, uh, one of these games, and he realized that he was actually, through doing it, he was actually losing a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, he was getting fit. And he came up with the idea of actually measuring the activity rate. So I've taken a wee screen cap here, and this is from his website at the VR Health Institute. I might move it a little bit mm -hmm. closer to the screen just now. But if you yeah. just hold it here, um, what you might be able to see is you can see each of these different games with a little rating on it as well. Now, uh, because this is on a website, it's generally interactive, but you can recognize here, that's Audio Shield, there's Gorn at the top there. And you can see how by spending time, he's used a professional laboratory to measure exactly how many calories you expend. So here, playing Audio Shield on standard, it's between eight and 10 calories per minute, equivalent to like a kind of a rowing exercise. Uh, and then you can crank it up uh, to 10 to 13 down here. And uh, I don't know what this game is, oh, but this looks yes. really intense. 15 I think plus a, calories it's, it's per minute. It's a boxing game, know, a and boxing I agree. Game. Yeah, that one gets pretty sweaty. My daughter sweats a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so there you go. So so if you want to see that, that's vrhealth.institute. And uh, I think he's working his way through games uh, and activities to allow people to sort of factor this into it. So, so you can use virtual reality as a way of getting fit, but if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that you're fit to do so as well. I, I put in the advisory here that you, if you have any pre-existing health concerns, you might want to speak sure. to a physician first. But um, uh, and, and also to make sure that you don't have too many breakables. <gasps> yes, because, long live my yeah, lamp. That's the main problem, isn't it? Smashing yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, this yeah, is great. I smashed a few um, things. So, so the, other, the other thing to say is it's not just about physical exercise as well, because as human beings, we're not just physical creatures, we're sort of mental and emotional creatures too. And so I don't have another slide for this. I'll, I'll leave this up here just now, but virtual reality, we, we're sitting here right now next to a campfire. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful night somewhere, uh, somewhere yeah. and uh, it's quite relaxing. You know, you feel like you're somewhere else. There's actually quite a lot of good evidence, but also quite a lot of applications out there um, to allow people to relax, uh, practice mindfulness meditation and this is all about maintaining mm -hmm. mental and emotional wellness uh, which is as important uh, and uh, and social VR is a way of making sure that people aren't isolated because humans are social creatures too uh, and you want to be able to spend time interacting with people like yourself Vivian you know and, yes uh, people, people want like to interact with you me know. that's that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely so so you know physical health Emotional health, mental health, virtual reality can help all of those uh, and make you a, a kind of happier and healthier person, which is what we right, want exactly. in 2018. Right, exactly. And that's what's it? going to happen in 2018. That, and I'm going to play more games, I promise. Um, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think this is, I think that's the appeal. For, for me, we, or for any of us in VR, you know, we see that people 
are not adopting it at such a quick rate because of the cost of the equipment. Yeah. Um, but for the people yeah. who, you know, start to use it or start to research it in industries, they are very um, mm -hmm. positive. Like for me, I see such value in social VR and, and you are a doctor, you see value in, in healthcare and VR. Um, so yes. many industries um, on, the, yeah. on the enterprise side see all of this value because it's, it's you know, immersive, it's in front of you, it's, it's active. So there's a lot yeah. of great things with people uh, in, out, in the outside industry, but for you as a doctor, um, mm -hmm. let's do some wild speculation. Is there any anything you think that could happen? Something you would like to see happen um, that isn't exactly there yet, but you yeah. know you think we're on the verge? Or oh yeah, 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 sure, yeah, absolutely. So what would I like to see? Um, I think coming into a pre one of the nice things actually when you when you look i'm reading a brilliant book by uh, jaron lanier at the moment called the dawn of the new everything or the dawn of new everything and jaron lanier is one of the kind of fathers of virtual reality he uh, he invented the original iphone not the i iphone but <laughs> eye phone and he's he's got wild <laughs> yeah no it's, it's, genuinely this is it's a fantastic okay. fantastic book and it's an insight into it's an insight into the sort of the, the thoughts behind why virtual reality was conceived and he's very big on social VR. He's very big on the social interaction, but also um, the importance of VR is about co-creation. It's about you and I and other people being mm -hmm. in a shared space and right. creating within it. It's, it's like sharing a dream. That's, that's the way he described it. So if I bring that back into what it'd be like in, in healthcare, uh, I'd like to enter into that space and have it as a sort of therapeutic dream space where doctors and patients or nurses or specialists come together and, and create an environment that helps us come to a common understanding of the illness and wellness, um, that build a space to allow us to express it. So I understand you better, you understand me better. And then we use that space as a place for, for kind of healing and, uh, and, and moving forward. And um, that's quite an abstract way of describing it. But I've explored using it in things like Minecraft, you know, and, and, and other gaming spaces and Facebook spaces and alt space and V time. Um, people want to speak together and you give people tools. So you and I would mm -hmm. maybe jointly build something, you know, as a representation, uh, a space that becomes yours. So I'm invited into your space and I understand more about you from the place that you've created. That's, that's what I'm excited about with virtual reality. And, uh, and the more people try virtual reality, the less this is going to sound like me as a madman rambling on about this. This is not, this is, uh -huh. this is definitely possible if we start yeah. working in the right direction. I think and so. I, I, think I agree. Um, I mean, what makes me really positive about it is not just the people I know who are using it, you know, as a consumer, but mm -hmm. just working in a business setting and seeing people's wheels turn, you know, all the different things that they, you know, they see can happen. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about VR yeah. and I'm not, in incredibly uh, well versed in you know AR and augmented reality, but you know you are. Yeah. So, are there any you know special mm. things that you're you're thinking of off the top of my head? I'm thinking like how are you? Is it like with the phone health or you know like people pointing at you know, different things or how do you see using it? Yeah, sure. I think it's interesting because when you talk about uh, so people always ask what is Apple doing? You know, Apple hasn't gone onto VR. They, they, they Apple yeah, are really going right. big on augmented reality, and everyone's always saying everyone's always saying that you know VR is nice, but augmented reality is going to be the thing. And I, I understand where people come from that because augmented reality is uh, is less isolating. I've got a headset on, you've got a headset on, and uh, and that's maybe not practical for working every single day, but. Uh, for, for augmented reality to really work and be comfortable for people, I think we're going to need some form, mm. form of lightweight mm -hmm. headset, you know, glasses or something. At the moment, we've got HoloLens, Meta, and Magic Leap, maybe. Um, but they're pretty big and cumbersome, and their field of view right. is relatively small. Um, so I think that I think that the technology for augmented, uh, augmented reality is still probably a little way off. I think um, virtual reality is definitely delivering more now. And then if I think about how would augmented reality help patients in a medical sense, it actually starts to get a little bit tricky. You sort of think, well, what could augmented reality genuinely do? Now, so I'm working with a developer to try and make um, an app at the moment to help people understand anatomy a little bit better using augmented reality. So if we're sitting together, we can share a view and I can show you a heart or a lung or, or something like that. And that's, a, that's actually a pretty good way mm -hmm. of using augmented reality. But um, I, I think beyond that, I, 
in the same way that I think virtual reality can actually treat people, you can use it to physically reduce pain. I'm not entirely sure how augmented reality might do that. I mean, I, 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 right. I'm waiting to be proved wrong on this, but I think that it's going to need a little bit more work. Virtual yes. reality is delivering the goods now. It just isn't spread. Amongst, yeah, I was actually thinking about that because for, you know, VR and the medical field, there are so many great, you know, th positive reactions to it. Um, you know, people who use it yeah. for, again, pain distraction um, and because you're, you're fully immersed yeah. for meditation, for, you know, like reducing stress yeah. um, with augmented reality, I guess maybe mm -hmm. maybe more educational. Like, for instance, if you put an iPad over yeah. someone's body and you can, you know, drag a different, I don't know, objects or whatever to display, or, you know, like or you know, yeah. better describe like how things are feeling or I mean, maybe for kids, you talked about how you know, yeah, kids yeah. may respond better to, to, you know, you as a cartoon. But yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see what, yes, uh, exactly, what yeah. they want to use augmented reality for in the medical field. Well, one, one of the things that is very interested is uh, one of the one of the uh, men that I'm working with or the guys I'm working with, a guy called Nicholas Llewellyn Jones from a company called Polybionics mm -hmm. based in Bristol in the UK. And he's had a great idea about the use of augmented reality oh. in prosthetic limbs um, because uh, because uh, what it does is um, I think the idea behind that is that it would um, mm -hmm. for people with prostheses, um, their the visual representation of, of their missing limb. Uh, and the absence of that can contribute yes. towards phantom yes. limb pain, uh, which, mm -hmm. is, which is a really unpleasant condition, because um, our awareness of self isn't just right. what we physically feel, it's what we see. Um, and so the theory is maybe if we can have aug like an augmented reality uh, prosthetic layered on top of an actual prosthetic, might mm -hmm. that make a person feel more comfortable? Might it reduce pain? You know, so I th I th there are right. things you can imagine well, that might yeah, work. Yeah, that's actually Definitely, very clever. But, I mean, I don't think I don't sit and think about this. I'm Mm. I'm no doctor. I've been told I'm not allowed to practice. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. yeah, that's what I'm really interested in. You know, <laughs> the creative ways people use technology, and that's actually yeah. very interesting. Um, the phantom limb um, pain. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. The the and and then and then the other thing to say as well about virtual reality and augmented reality and the importance of shows like this is that we're letting people know how VR can be used. Mm -hmm. not just in gaming but but can be used in in everything i mean what you're watching whatever it is you do virtual reality can be used in it so you know if you're a librarian mm -hmm. you have virtual reality libraries if you're a cook you can you know learn how to prepare new dishes and new techniques you know if you're a nurse it will help you understand those things as well anything that you do um might be impacted by vr and equally the things that you know that you know can be transferred to me and make me right, a better sharing information, more, yeah. you know, understanding doctor. So it's exactly, it's about understanding other people. So that's, yeah, that's exciting stuff I, too. I agree. Um, yay. Yay. Both agree. Wait, wait, wait. Yay. Hang on. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Um, okay. Well, thank you so much, doctor. Uh, Dr. Keith Grimes. I like that. Um, oh, you're very welcome. Do you go by Dr. Keith or Dr. Grimes? Like, is it? Oh, I go, well, I, I, I well, uh, to everyone i should i think i just go for dr keith because uh dr grimes oh. makes people think of the walking dead and rick grimes and uh um not that kind of uh not that kind of person but uh no i'm uh, i'm your friendly mm -hmm. neighborhood Making house PR calls. Doctor. Mm -hmm. giving and, you uh, virtual apples people do fine yeah. yes yes <laughs> virtual house calls well i very much <laughs> yes. appreciate this um so any closing words for people looking to start fresh you know a healthy start to 2018 um any last words for us Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so this is just a general medical thing here. Um, remember, when it comes to the new year, people start talking about detoxes. Your body has had a fantastic detox <laughs> organ. It's called your liver. So you don't need to take anything. You don't mm -hmm. need to like, do any of these kind of strange things. You just need to stop right. making things worse. Eat right. well, sleep well, relax, have fun. Let your liver does, do what it needs to and uh, oh, enjoy your Very game. good. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, yeah. That's actually really great. And I hope we can have you back to talk about all these different myths and misconceptions. Um, I know people really love talking about those detoxes. So. <laughs> oh, detoxes. Oh, oh, sure. Don't get me started on those. But it's been lovely. It's been really lovely speaking to you. And hello, everyone. Absolutely. We'll, we'll have in, you back uh, Altspace in Altspace. Um, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Isn't that funny? Oh, here, can you, how are my tonsils looking? 
yeah, uh, they are looking uh, like you've either got one massive tonsil because it's all <laughs> blank at the back there, or you've got no tonsils at all. Okay, but I'm sure you're maybe fine. diagnosing isn't isn't there completely yet, 